Powerhouse, presented by Alliant Energy. Alliant Energy, we're on for you. Welcome back to Powerhouse. We've all driven down country roads and seen old abandoned barns sitting there just waiting to be bulldozed or collapse. Well, if you look at those same barns with an environmentally friendly eye, you can see all kinds of valuable building materials just waiting to be reused or recycled. We're going to show you a project that does just that. Today we're at a barn renovation where they have really taken that idea to heart. Now, the owner of this barn and the man with the vision to turn it into his own home is Jeff Tegler, and his son Jared is the general contractor. Jeff, what prompted you to feel the need to rescue this particular barn? I didn't want the barn to be torn down, so when I saw the for sale sign go in the yard, I immediately called, and oddly enough, the owner was from a farming background, and he asked me what my intentions were for the property, and I said, well, I'm buying it to save the barn. I really wouldn't be interested in it other than the barn. And that made him happy that we were going to reuse the barn. At that time, I didn't know what for, for sure, but my plan was to save the barn, and, and now we're changing it into a house. Well, I can tell by looking at it, this isn't a typical barn that we drive by. How old would you say this barn is? The lumber in it, from the hand-hewn uh, timbers and the timber frame, the uh, wooden pegs, the mortise and tenon joints, and even the round log purlins, some of them still with the bark on it, date it back into the late 1800s, possibly 1860s to 1880s, because after that, usually most of the lumber was sawn rather than hand-hewn. Well, talking about the lumber, I mean, obviously the craftsmanship back then was amazing. So, Jared, what kind of materials have you chosen to use in the renovation? Well, like Dad has said, we like to reclaim lumber from old barns that might be heading to the landfill, and there's a lot of beautiful wood in there that you can use as far as the great big beams, um, they got a lot of floorboards in there that are almost up to 24 inches and that kind of stuff you just can't find anymore. Um, a lot of the new stuff that we might have used to make it keep with the look are the Pella True Light windows. They're actually individual sashes just like barn sashes would have been back in the day. So you really kept a lot of um, the integrity of this building in making your choices. Mm -hmm. How about the exterior? Can we go take a look at yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. So how do you make a barn energy efficient? Well, with this one, we wanted to keep the look on the inside the same. So what we actually did was we took off all the bats from the original siding. We put a layer of felt paper over there. We furred it out so we could put two layers of rigid insulation in there. And that's going to give us our R21. After that, we do a regular wrap with Tyvek, just like you do on any other house. And then we're going to add our other layer of barn siding. That way, when you're all said and done, you have an R value of 21, plus you get that authentic look on the inside and the outside. So it's really combining technology of today with the aesthetic of yesterday. Exactly. Jared, the stone foundation is absolutely gorgeous. Can we talk about the foundation for a little bit? Because obviously, you know, it's the basis of the house, and when it's decades old, or in this case, over a century old, how do you ensure that it's not only safe, but it's also energy efficient? Well, the first thing we'll do is just make sure there's no major cracks or damage to the foundation. This one actually is about a foot and a half to two foot thick, so we were pretty sure it wasn't going to go anywhere. Uh, as far as insulating value, we're, we wanted to keep the look of this stone foundation, so we're actually going to insulate this floor. And what we'll do is we'll just put a netting across, um, blow some insulation in there so it really gets all in the nicks and crannies, and then we'll put 5 8 fire code sheetrock on top of that to give us all of our safety purposes. Okay. I imagine through this long process, you've probably come across some obstacles or challenges. What comes to mind for you? Uh, the biggest thing was just, you know, looking to make sure everything is structurally sound. You know, there wasn't going to be any major changes in the, you know, the whole structure of the building. A lot of these old places didn't have, you know, water or gas to them, so the only thing we had to work with was electricity and getting everything put into this building from there on. Um, it's really important to get an architectural designer in here, I believe, and um, if we go upstairs and talk to Dad, he might be able to fill you in on some of those things. Okay, let's go. Jeff, Jared and I were just talking about challenges. What has been your biggest obstacle in this process? Probably the biggest one, Megan, was uh, getting a building permit within a city to change a barn into a residence. I mean, they've done uh, warehouse buildings into condominiums, but nobody has tried changing a barn, an accessory building, one that livestock lived in, into their residence. You plan on living here for a very, very long time. 
what steps have you taken to ensure that that happens? Well, as you said, I don't want to do this again. I plan on living here for the rest of my life. Uh, so the National Home Builders Association has a designation and training for designers to help people that are going to retire, whether they're building a new home or a remodeled home, to live in it a long time. Normal things like the master bedroom should be on the main floor. The laundry room should be on the main floor. Everything you need to use in everyday life. The extra areas upstairs can be for when the kids come home. Then we put three foot wide doors in in case we're in a walker or a wheelchair. The garage is big enough that I can ha hide a ramp in the garage if I would need that someday rather than have it on the outside of the house. Roll under sinks, there will be a pedestal sink in the master bath. Just things like that so I can stay here a long time before Jared puts me in the nursing home. <laughs> <laughs> well clearly you both are putting your heart and soul into this and that's so neat to see. Thank you very much for the tour. Thank you.